Hi guys, I'm Lawrence. And I'm Josh. And today we're going to go Spelunky. Derek Hugh and Moss Mouth Spelunky was first released in 2009 as a free-to-play in-browser side project, but it is now a downloadable HD game on XBLA, PSN and PC, and a critically acclaimed one at that. It was PC Gamer UK's Game of the Year for 2013, amongst other impressive accolades. Just like Indiana Jones, whip and all, you are thrown down into a series of cavernous labyrinths of danger in which you must claim your fortune and then escape. But first you must survive, no mean feat. The resources provided are four bombs, four ropes and four hearts, all of which run out quick. Progressing, which is a matter of finding a level's exit, is complicated by the random level generation. And a varied and diabolical catalogue of monsters and traps ensure you'll be dying a lot. As permadeath is in play, every death is brutally punishing. All hard-earned progress can be instantly wiped away in one fatal moment. The consequence is a lot of cursing, keyboard smashing and the thought that this game is your tormentor. However, death is the best learning experience in the game. It demands resilience from you and teaches you to be patient. There's no leeway given for rash frantic charging, just painful death. Also, every death is a kernel of knowledge, in that you learn of a new threat and that you have to think of how to overcome it, such as triggering arrow traps with a pot. The more you play, the more you'll notice. Those gold bars and gems on the floor can be exchanged for an array of items. They can put a spring in your step, a bullet in your enemies, and much more. And that lady, who screams for help from a distant corner of the level, is offering a precious heart as a reward for her rescue. Eventually, you'll figure out how to play it. And when you do, there is a consolation of improvement and achievement. Which, amidst the extreme difficulty and your inevitable fury, is extremely satisfying. Something that immediately sticks out about Splunky is how everything in the level can be interacted with. The terrain around you, that would usually constrict you in a platformer, can be blown up with bombs to create a new path. And drops like rocks and the corpses of enemies can be picked up and converted into makeshift weapons. You are afforded a lot of liberty, allowing you the ability to play in many different ways and demonstrate your resourcefulness. You can be a running gun outlaw robbing shopkeepers, a cautious grenadier who blasts their way out of trouble, or plot to have an easy jetpack joyride through the bottomless ice caves. One way in which this freedom is stripped from you, however, are the controls. Although they are instinctive, they can harshly fail you in pressure moments when intricacy is hard to master. This would be okay. But the consequence of restarting without all your items seems too unfair, and somewhat counterintuitive considering how much skill determines success in this game. Moss Mouth have added humour to the experience. The whole helpless damsel in distress concept is amusingly satirised. They wait in a cave for their saviour only to run in panic after their rescue, possibly to their death. And they can be ridiculously flung through the air at enemies, It can even act as a meat shield from missiles. Also, is it some coincidence that the annoying bats which fly in a hard to avoid trajectory are small, purple, everywhere and in caves? However, the most laughs are had in multiplayer. Playing with someone else results in all sorts of mishaps and friendly fire, sometimes by accident and sometimes not. The experience quickly becomes a loud, deceitful and flawed attempt to cooperate, but an extremely enjoyable one. And, if you do manage to survive, it is even more rewarding, because it was done as a team. There's also Deathmatch, that throws you into homicidal arenas for a manic Super Smash Bros-esque experience. On PC, there is a daily challenge, which allows you to compete on the same seat as and test yourself against other Spelunkers. The replay value of this game is as deep as the colossal caves in which it is set. The challenge of Spelunky, initially unappetizing, slowly gets you addicted as progressing further than you have before, and tracking uncharted territory becomes a personal and determined mission. In no time you will be pulling yourself off the ground after a tragic death and be clicking restart to go through it all again. Such is the rollercoaster that is Spelunky. All the rage it will inevitably cause you has to be taken with a grain of salt because there is a lot of fun to be had. My score for this explosive roguelike platformer is an 8 out of 10. Amongst the relentless suffering and occasional joy, the encapsulating magic of Spelunky is secretly woven. There is no real in-game storyline, but none is needed, as it is entirely and to great effect completely player-driven. The game is extremely fickle. You're never safe, and when you are, you'll most likely die. But that just makes the advent of success that much more fulfilling and enjoyable. I am totally enamoured with and addicted to this dungeon crawling torture party. Top marks, 10 out of 10. If you like this review, subscribe to see more like it in the future. Also, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching. We'll be back here next week for our first news video here on Indieformer.